here you can see the shade of the tree of the big gum tree there and this is also shading my garage of course it's 10 o'clock in the morning still shading on it that's what you have to deal with it's fine and welcome back to well you know the rest let's get started we will be working on top of the off-grid garage today stage two of the solar setup and as you can see i have prepared the extenders for our solar system already well you would ask what is an extender <laughs> is stage two not the extension of your solar setup <laughs> yeah of course the extender is to give us more room between the roof and the actual solar panel usually you have let me explain this so this is how it usually looks like you've got your l feet uh, mounting bracket here which has this weird nut uh, goes into your profile of the rail system and then you've got your uh, solar panels on top of them and then you can height adjust this with your bracket and this is basically the maximum height you will get and if you have seen previous videos of my channel one of some of the first ones actually i have got these fiber class well like flat bars they are usually being used for isolating bus bars but i have used them to extend my yeah i have used them to extend my space between the rail system and the roof by about i think it was around 140 mil or so yeah and here on my first stage of the solar setup you can see the extenders i have put in between and look how much room i have now this is this is almost 200 millimeters now here i'm getting in between roofs so i've got enough space to work on the cables i can clean out leaves here and everything and this is just perfect this makes so much sense and i also get better cooling because there's more airflow underneath and and this doesn't give the wind more area to actually grab the panels and rip them off or something of course there can be more air more wind coming in but the wind can also escape the same way again we had some storms already with these panels here and well they are still here so the only thing i need to do on these on these bars here is to drill two eight millimeter holes here and then we can start mounting everything on top of the roof and this will be stage two of our whole setup here one of many stages i guess so just to give you an orientation this is the east roof pointing to the east north is over there south is over there we don't go south here in australia we go north this is where the sun is and this is our west roof and then we've got the carport as well and these other roofs here as well then so stage two uh west roof just at the front here away from the trees from the shade this is where the maximum solar power is you can see the sun is already pointing to the west now so we're getting a really bad angle on these solar panels already so it would be good to have more on this side of the roof here pointing towards the sun now yeah see we are getting 480 500 watts now only It'll be cloudy 600 ah oh, here we go 800 watts we're getting in full sun on these solar panels but we could potentially get 1300 watts if the sun would be in a better angle so more panels on this side gives us more power into the battery and well actually we are doing a second experiment at the same time this is the first time i'm using the enclosure fully closed only with the fans connected to the inverter and the relay inside and we are charging the vehicle at the moment with about uh, 1.2 kilowatts or something so i'm trying to harvest as much solar power as possible and as you can see the car uses 1.2 kilowatts the solar panels on the roof deliver only 800 watts at the moment so there's always a gap and i'm slowly discharging the battery so i cannot really use my solar only to charge the car that's why i need more solar as well because with the new setup this will be another 1.7 kilowatts on the west roof we will have three kilowatts all in total on on maximum solar capacity and i will be able to charge the vehicle then and the battery at the same time so we have now been charging the car for two hours 
and let's see what the temperatures do 25 still 29 let's open Pandora's box 34 so this is for the last two hours now we can see the inverter temperature has risen by two degrees the um, temperature at the top fans was stable and the bottom fans has actually decreased by one degree so what i will do now i will increase the charging speed inside the car from five amps to eight amps the fan speed inside the inverter increases and let's close the door again there we go all right let's give it another hour so this is now 1840 watts as per inverter and only 300 watts are coming from the solar the rest is coming from the battery and it's down to 20 percent so that's not good i definitely need more solar <laughs> So, and here's basically what I'm doing. This is the M8 bolt in here, which holds the whole thing together. I've got another M6 in here, so it doesn't swivel. And at the top, we've got the original uh, stainless steel bolt in here with the nut for the rail system. So, and this is our extension we have then. And we still have some play in here to actually adjust this one in the height a little bit, because well, just because the roof is not really straight, it 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 bends down in the middle a little bit, so it it hangs through, so to speak. And you need to compensate this with this adjustment of these um, feet a little bit. So your rail system is straight, but the roof underneath makes a little bow. Okay, so I prepare all these feet now, and then we go on the roof and start mounting them. Uh, I'm getting a low voltage warning again, so we are pretty much down with the battery. I think we are at 11, 11% we are. <laughs> I need more solar, I told you. Okay, we have to um, disconnect the car now. This is getting too much. Well, we have, charged, we have charged now on the 8 amp setting for about 45 minutes. So it is almost 3 o'clock. And let's do some measurement. Bottom first. 25. 30.9 so 31 yeah this is just the low voltage warning now and we are 39 here on the clock 39.8 so almost 40 let's say 40 degrees so 3 p.m 40 degrees 31 25 all right, so this is uh, three hours charging, but only uh, for 45 minutes on a higher rate. So I need to test this again once the battery is a bit higher charged. Uh, for now, it's fine. I just wanted to check the connections here. Yeah, there's nothing warmer, so this is all cool. All good. Uh, I also have the problem that these used rails for the solar panels do not match my roof. So I had to cut them to actually match my roof length. Now I have to join these two parts again. And you can buy these rail joiners from, from this company. They are about $30 a pair. And they, they, just, they, just, slide into, they just slide into the um, profile here and then have two screws and they clamp into the profile and on the other side as well and just join them with a bar. And I thought, well, a bar, I could get a bar for cheaper than 29 bucks. So I got to my preferred hardware store in Gatton again yesterday, and they had a six millimeter flat aluminum bar. I bought 1.5 meters for $10.80 or so. So ridiculously cheap again. The problem is the, the gap, the gap here where I, <laughs> Uh, got the bar and see there's in the gap this this small compartment this um, long compartment here uh, is only 5.8 millimeters wide and the bar is six millimeter 
0.2 millimeters, not that big of a deal, you know. A little bit of WD-40 and a good argument here, make it all work. And I've done just one here. So I put four screws in there. They are joined now together and perfect. The joiner for $29 wouldn't do anything else. So it's a little bit more work to drill these holes and get these screws in, but that's the trick. Yeah, I don't want to spend $60 on that, right? I'm too tight for that. <laughs> the the actual funny part was when I rang them yesterday and said I need an aluminium flat bar 5.7 millimeters thick and about 30 millimeters wide there was silence on the phone on the other side I'm not sure if he thought I'm, I'm making jokes or something because it was the first of April but well I gave him the dimensions I need you know six millimeters is just a little bit too thick but I'll make it work <laughs> but the silence for several seconds on the phone priceless <laughs> it's like a hot knife through butter Nice, another two to go. Such a nice spot up here. Anyway, I have to take care of the sunset later on. We are here to mount some solar rails, right? Yeah, these are the screws which are in the roof and these ones are coming with a solar system the rail system here they are a lot longer and thicker so they go in the same hole but <laughs> they last <laughs> you're not moving this one anymore <laughs> no way and look at this nice afternoon sun i'm missing out right now because the angle is so bad on these panels there's probably like a hundred watts now and these ones are still in full sunshine. No juice anymore. That was it. Okay, let's do the rest tomorrow. That'll be fine. Nice, I like it. It's another 1.7 kilowatt, just for free. It's insane. And this is only half of the space here on the roof, on this side. I've got more space there, I've got more space there. I've got the whole carport situation here. And we've got another shed there. 15 to 20 kilowatts, easy. So I have measured the new panels again and they are only 50 millimeters shorter than these ones. Well, if you are from America and don't know what 50 millimeters is, just ask your wife. It makes all the difference. <laughs>